good blessed happy friday morning i pray that each of you guys slept well um, I pray that you're ready to receive what it is that the Lord has for you. And I pray that the word ministers to each and every one of the hearts and that you're open to receive what it is. And so the Lord woke me up bright eyed and bushy tailed 4 a.m. So I've been up since then. I had my um, cup of coffee. I went downstairs. I thought I was being sneaky. Honestly, I went downstairs, started to read my devotionals. And here comes little Miss Daisy, right as soon as I had just finished my uh, pot of coffee, setting up my, my pot to brew. And I know what you're thinking. He brews, so that should be brewing. But I was the first one up. I was up with the chicken. So I brewed today's coffee. And um, little Miss Daisy sat next to me. She fell asleep shortly after. But here I am. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm, um, you know, just... It's static to be here to share the word of God with each and every one of you guys, blessed by the best, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so um, let me share with you what the Lord has placed in my heart. I started to get into the book of Ephesians, and I read um, the Bible that I have my grandma got for me uh, several years back, actually in 2011, because I have the date wrote, and it's the Amplified Old Testament and Amplified New Testament by Joyce Myers, so it's a commentary Bible, so I really love this Bible, especially because of the commentary, um, and so, um, let me just start, and so it says, you know, though the Ephesians is literally filled with wisdom, encouragement, and great teachings about what it means to be a Christian, and how the church should operate, I believe one of the most important messages in this letter is that you and I are unconditionally loved and totally accepted by Christ. Isn't it beautiful to know that we are totally accepted and unconditionally loved? Where in this world, you know, people will love you when you fit in their circle or, um, you know, they'll love you if you're acting the way um, they want you to act, you know. We live in a world where people are conditional. They love you under their conditions. But Father God, He loves you with a genuine, true, agape love. That unconditional love that says, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to love you. I see... Um, I don't look at your sin, I see past that sin. I don't look at your flaws, I see past your flaws. I don't look at your wrongdoings, I don't look at your mistakes. I just love you unconditionally. And the Word of God says that we are to be Christ-like, correct? When we come to Christ, when we proclaim to be His children, His sons and daughters, we are to become more Christ-like. So that when others see us, they see Christ within us. Amen? Indeed, one of the key points in the book is that God loves you and that you can receive and enjoy that love and become increasingly rooted and grounded in it. Amen. So let us today be increasingly rooted and grounded in the word of God. Let each and every day we desire to be increasingly rooted and grounded in the word of God. Amen. Not uh, wavering, not, um, you know, leaving room for um, for yourself to not put full trust in Him, but trusting in, relying in, and relying on what the Word of God says. Amen? This book addresses the spiritual blessings that belong to us in Christ, our position of authority in Christ, the mysteries of God, the needs to walk in love and in the light, the importance of unity among believers, come on, proper order in families and relationships, how to deal with anger, and how to war against the powers and the principalities of the spiritual realm. We know when we come to, um, we know as Christians that we do not fight against flesh and blood. It's never against flesh and blood, but against the heirs and the principalities. So I love how it says, you know, that, you know, the book of Ephesians shows us, teaches us the importance of unity amongst the believers, proper order in families and relationships, how to deal with anger, and how to war against the powers and the principalities. The Word of God in, 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 in all of it, from Genesis to Revelation, is instruction for us. It's profitable for, um, for us to um, you know, learn and grow from. And so it's, it's a life manual. It's an instruction book so that we can become spiritually mature and strengthened and, you know, know how to live in this life there's there's 
anything that you go through in life, you could go to the Word of God and I'm sure you could find something that will bring encouragement to you, that will bring healing to you, that will bring confirmation to you, that will bring peace to you. And so I encourage that you always go to the Word of God. Amen? As you spend time in Ephesians, I hope that it may be that it's many rich teachings will take root in your hearts that you will apply them in your everyday life especially hope and pray that through this book you experience god's love and acceptance in a deep personal way and that you are filled with a sense of purpose as you read about how he feels about you amen so really really um you know meditate on his words because god you know he loves you unconditionally like i said at the start of this with with um an agape love, an everlasting love, a genuine love. God has great things for you, things he ordained before foundation of the world. Ask him to reveal them and enable you to do them by the power of the Holy Spirit. So for those of you who you're wondering if um, you're called or if you're qualified, I'm going to tell you right now, you are called and you are qualified and if God calls you to it he's going to equip you no matter what the naysayers say no matter what the haters say because we all got them haters God is going to enable you to do the 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 power through the power of the Holy Spirit God will enable you and equip you amen so just have that God confidence go forward knowing that you know the Holy Spirit within you is going to uh, do wonders and, and you're going to fulfill whatever it is that God has destined and prearranged and pre-planned for you to do in this life. And so, you know, some may say, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm here for. Um, you know, there have been times in my life where I've thought those thoughts, but I know what I'm here for and I know what my purpose is. And my purpose is, um, you know, so that I can uh, be a shining uh, light and bring hope to the lost amen and with that you know also um you know to be the mom that god has created and destined me to be and to be the wife that he's called me to be to be the leader in the church that he's called me to be there are many things that god has um you know called me to and so i know that my time here on earth is going to be um you know lived bringing glory to the father and and leading people to christ in any way that i possibly can i'm going to be that willing vessel and my prayer is that each and every one of you guys will know what your purpose is and if you don't know that you'll seek father god yesterday i talked about you we we ask seek knock and so that you'll seek the lord and ask him what is it? What is it that you have for me, Lord? What are you calling me to do? And then, um, you know, I pray that you will uh, be open to receive what it is that he has for you. So the first part of this I wrote is um, we're going to read Ephesians 1, 4 through 5. So Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, and actually I'm going to start in verse 3. May blessings, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual given by the Holy Spirit blessing in the heavenly realm. Isn't it beautiful that it says with every spiritual blessing? It doesn't say with some spiritual blessings. It doesn't say, you know, a little bit or here and there or this or that. It says with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Verse 4 says, even as in his love he chose us he actually picked us out of out for himself as his own in christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy consecrated and set apart for him and blameless in his sight even above reproach before him in love for he ordained us destined us planned in love for us to be adopted revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent and I love this scripture you know it talks about being adopted into the family being adopted into um, you know his family and you know for those of you who know me personally you know that I was adopted and so I like to say and I like to tease my sister um, that I was chosen my mom had her but she chose me out of out, out of all of it you know she had her children but she chose me and my brothers and i and i i just you know i like to tease them in that and so each and every one of you can say god chose me he chose me he adopted me he welcomed me he chose me and i pray that each and every one of you guys really really let that minister to your hearts. Let that encourage you. 
Think about that for a moment. God chose me. He chose me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He chose me. Each and every one of you, amen. You are adopted into his king, into his kingdom. And so I wrote, we are chosen. God set us apart for himself and made provision in Jesus for us to be holy, blameless, and consecrated. Amen. So set yourselves, he set you apart, set yourselves apart. Don't blend into the rest of the world because a lot of times, you know, it's it's easy to get caught up into the things of the world or enticed or um, you know, I'm trying to think of the word that it's called influenced, but I'm here to tell you that, you know, you're set apart as you are a child of God. You are set apart. You are not to blend in with the rest of the world. Um, are people going to come against you? Yes. Are people going to hate on you? Yes. It's okay. What happened to Jesus on the cross? They came against him. They spit on him. They ridiculed him. They belittled him. They hated on him. But it's okay. You're going to be... Mama, um, I'm not watching. Okay, go in there, baby. You're going to be, um, you know, hated. But it's it's okay. You just persevere. You press on. You keep moving forward. Okay, let me turn the volume off then. Daisy wants to be in here. <laughs> oh, you want to draw. I want to show them on my movie. No. It's just hot I know, but sweetheart, do you want to color? Yeah, I'll okay. Put my Let me give Daisy yeah, something to color with. So she wants to be next it. to Mama. Okay. Looky, brother's calling me. You can take my pen if you want. No. Okay, sit down. Okay. So the next scripture that I have for you, Mom Life, right? I know. <laughs> it, her older brother came in and, and tried to take her. He's like, "Come on, Daisy, let Mom do her devotional." Daisy's like, "No." No. So she's sitting right here next to me drawing. Okay. So the next part of this is seated, seated in heavenly places. We're going to go to Ephesians 2, 6. If you're following along or you want to take down notes, Ephesians 2, 6 reads, and he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. With that, the note that I wrote is we're seated in heavenly places. Um, Ephesians 2, 6 talks about us being yet that we are spiritually seated in heavenly places. Amen. Yes, physically we are here on earth, but simultaneously we can be spiritually seated with God in heavenly places. And and I just want you guys to be encouraged with that, knowing that isn't it beautiful to know that he chose us and 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 that he called us to be seated in heavenly places with him? You know, the king, the one true king, the creator of heaven and earth, Abba, our father, the one who spoke everything into existence. Every time I think about that, I'm like, man, imagine what if you could just speak things uh, and, and poof, the mountain is uh, before you or, you know, you speak something and poof, it's right there. Well, um, that's what God did. That's that's what he did. And so let us be encouraged with that. Sorry, she's kind of distracted, me, but it's OK. So then we go to um, Ephesians 2, 47. I want, I want green. That's red, baby. Red. Go on your notebook, though. Only on the notebook, baby. You want me to put the back on there? Ephesians 2, 47 reads, I laugh because um, Sister Nicole's on and all the time baby Gabriel's getting in the middle of, of the devotionals and I, or of her uh, studies, and I like to say um, mom life. Us moms, huh? Mom life. So Ephesians 2, I think I wrote the wrong scripture, 4 through 7. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7, read. But God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy and great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us even when we were dead slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with christ he gave us the very life of christ himself the same new life with which he quickened him 
4. It is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, and that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation and what i wrote for this today i encourage you to take a moment and reflect on the riches of god's grace and thank him for his love and kindness toward each of us i don't you know sometimes i wonder if we really truly take time to meditate or to think about how loved we truly are so i encourage you you know take time to think about that reflect on that and and, and you know just Wow, it's amazing that he loved each and every one of us so much that he died on that cross, that he bore it all for each and every one of us. He took the lashes, took the beating, took the ridicule, took it all. Why? Because of his love, his love and kindness and, and his compassion for each and every one of us. Amen. And so uh, let me just say good good morning. Amber, Sandy, Monica, Sheena, um, good morning. Jessica, good morning. A fatherless to the fatherless. That's exactly what he is, Sheena. A father to the fatherless. Amen. Rebecca, glad to see that you're on. Brother Sammy says, good blessed morning, sister. I pray all is well with you today. Your devotionals are a real blessing for me. Thank you. All glory to God. Amen. Um, Sammy says, persuaded. Sheena says, distracted. I do. I get easily distracted. I'm not the best multitasker. Let me just um, confess that before each and every one of you guys. I, I'm not a good multitasker. But, um, you know, what do you say? My sister Nicole Leanne, good morning. Sandy, good morning. And um, so, moving on. Ephesians 2.10. And I only have two more scriptures for you guys. So, Ephesians 2.10 reads, For we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, and we may do the good works which God predestined, pre-planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for each and every one of us to live. Amen. That's power in itself right there. That's one scripture that should, um, you know, encourage you, bless you, and minister to your heart. I mean, just to know that for we are God's own handiwork. He created us. And with that, he not only created us, but it says, born anew, that we may do those good works, which God predestined and planned beforehand. Amen. What I wrote for this is this passage tells us that we are God's own handiwork. He created us with his own hands and created us to serve him. So he created us with his own hands and he created us to serve him. I love this quote by John Piper. Our deeds are not the basis of our salvation. They are the evidence of our salvation. I'm going to read this one more time. Our deeds are not the basis of our salvation. They are the evidence of our salvation when we come to Christ he puts a new desire within our heart a desire that wholeheartedly wants to do his good work we are compelled to do what he's called us to do amen it's a desire that he puts and and we're like send me Lord use me Lord what do you need next for me Lord how can I serve how can I help how can I be a light in this dark world how can I show people who you are how can I you know use me Lord so that others can see you through me use me Lord so that people know they're loved and where does that love come from it comes from the father up in heaven amen so I, I just uh, another thing that I really really want to minister to your hearts I want that I want you to meditate on this today um, is that you know he puts a desire within our heart when we come to Christ we no longer, you know, the, the dead man is old and gone. Where we were once selfish in the world, we are now selfless in Christ. We no longer think of I and how can I do, do this and how can I do that and, and what can I get from this. I, 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 I. It's no longer that way when we come to Christ. Now it's how can I serve the Father? How can I serve the community? How can I serve the brother and sisters in Christ? How can I serve? Amen. He puts a new desire within our hearts. Um, and so just really, really let that quote uh, minister to you. The last scripture I have for you is Ephesians 3, 
14 through 21. And, you know, I just want to say um, I really encourage that you spend some time meditating on the Word. I, I, I really ask that you um, put aside some time to read the whole book of Ephesians because it's, it's all profitable. It's, you know nourishment to our spirit and and it teaches us you know how we can love it shows us how much christ loves us amen sometimes we feel that we're so rotten in who we are or we're so disgusting or we're so unlovable but here's confirmation here's encouragement here's um you know the word of god showing showing us how he loves us no matter what amen so ephesians 3 14 through 21 reads for this reason Seeing that greatness of this plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit, himself indwelling your innermost being and your personality. May Christ, through your faith, actually dwell. May he settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love that you may have the power, be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the, the, the breadth, that length and height and depth of it, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Verse 20 says, Now him who by in, in consequence of the action of his power that is work within us is able to carry out his purpose and all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our high hopes or dreams to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations forever and ever amen so be it so let us know the depth of God's love Paul fervently prayed that the Ephesians would understand the width the length the depth the height of God's love for them and they would be rooted and grounded in that boundless love today I close by saying all the fullness of God. Amen. This is Mr. Teach every one of your hearts. I pray that you know you. I pray that you are rooted and grounded. Um, I could see on my end that it's lagging. I pray that on your end it's not lagging. But if you have a leave it in the comment box you private message me i'm always willing to pray up with you guys we're going to continue to lift up uh sister mary and all her family to you um ask that we continue to lift up all those who are sick this morning um we just pray that god continue to be with each of us so father god we humbly say we thank you um for your word we thank you that um in your word we can find healing hope we face we can go to your word this this book this life manual and we can find what it is that you have to say for that situation whatever we're facing whether it's marital issues whether um you know we're having um, doubts maybe fear whatever it may be to your word and we can and it fills us up it recharges us it energizes us it refreshes us it's actually it that we need and courageous and be the bold Christians that you have called us to be. Father God, no matter what comes against us, your word said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So Father, I thank you in advance for all for leading us, for guiding us, Father God. I thank you, Father, that we could come to you with anything, that no prayer is too big, no prayer is too small. And that's for all you're doing in and through each and every one of us, Father. I thank you that every one of us, Father 
God, um, just in this week alone, Father, I, I thank you that you're already um, at work in the midst of every single one of those prayer requests that have been lifted up, Father God. I thank you, Father. You are the true healer. You are the great counselor. You are everything that we need, Father God. And let us never forget how much we need you on a daily basis, just as we need air to breathe. May we rely and trust in you and need you in the same way every single day. Um, Father, I just thank you. I pray that, that um, the word, the message goes forth and that it penetrates the hearts and that they were able to receive what it is that you had for them father i pray that you continue to minister to our hearts each and every day i pray that we be a people that show your genuine agape love father god and when we when we um you know fall short when we fall into sin or temptation let us not become ashamed but let us be convicted and let us bring that correction God I just thank you for your forgiveness I thank you for love, for love your mercy and kindness I thank you father God that through you I am victorious and and through you father we can we can achieve and do all it is that you have called and destined for us to do father God that no matter what the naysayers say or those who who don't see the greater vision, Father? We we know that you that you are going to work all things out, and that Father God, you equip us even when those don't feel that we are qu equipped, Father God. Whether no matter what our background is, we can be the stuttering Thomas, we can be the prostitute, um, the drug addict. It doesn't matter our background, Father God. You see right past the sin. You see right past our shortcomings, and you use you use us anyways. Father God, and when you use us, it brings such, um, it brings people to come to know who you are, Father God. It brings a testimony, and we thank you for that, Father. I just pray that you continue to bless each person um, today, Father God, that has, um, you know, viewed. And I just pray that you continue to go before us, and that you continue to guide us in your ways, in, in everything that we do, Father God. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. In Jesus' mighty and powerful, precious name, we pray. Amen. I love you guys. I thank you guys for getting on. Um, I thank you guys for your encouragement in my life and um, for your continued support. And, and I just pray that, you know, the word of God just minister to each and every one of your hearts. I love love ever so strong in your lives today and, and that you are encouraged by it. Amen. Love you guys. Have a blessed good.